Hello, you absolute bunch of heroes. So, I just wanted to record this quick uh, video for you. Just, in fact, it won't be that quick. <laughs> just to run you, run you through basically what is at the end of the, the Flame Nutrition Bible, okay? So this is the bonus feature, um, which is telling you basically how you can amplify your results. So a few little things that you can do, which will actually make your results even better and uh, just ensure that you're going to continue to to drop fat at a rate of knots. Uh, as you may well find on you know any nutrition or exercise program you do, you, there's going to be a time when you'll hit a plateau. Um, you know, that's inevitable. And the things we're going to go through in just a moment or two are actually the sorts of things that we can do to, to help make sure you bust through the plateau. And actually, as I said, make sure that we do skyrocket those results um, and get you looking, feeling, and being a whole lot sexier. Yes. Okay, cool. So there's a there's a pile of different things here. How many have I got? Uh, Christ, 16. 16 things. Not a problem. So we're going to get through all of these and I'll just give you a little bit on them. So look, number one is getting over, the, if you haven't already, is getting over the perception that eating things like meat and veg for breakfast is weird. It's 100% not weird. It's actually a really good way to boost your energy, drop your body fat and, and actually rapidly get in shape. Okay, so when we're talking about sort of veggies for breakfast, that could be anything from, you know, some stir fried mixed veggies with some, some cashew nuts or, uh, or like some eggs or, or whatever else, a bit of fish, or it might be something like uh, my, my Hulk shoe shite omelet uh, that's a swear word sorry um, where we just blend sort of two or three eggs massive handful of spinach fry it up just the same as you would do a banana omelet so fry the bottom grill the top and that is lush looks looks horrendously funny a bit nuclear uh, but tastes great so getting veggies down for breakfast is for absolute winners now I don't care if you eat them or whether you juice them or whatever just make sure you're getting some down okay and some proteins as well so for your protein sources we're looking pretty much at meat uh, fish and eggs as your three primary ones. Uh, a few veggies, then uh, then cashew nuts and, and almonds and, and things like that are good as well. Right, realize that eating last night's cold, nutritious leftovers is actually for winners. All right, that 100% is one of my favorite tactics, okay? Say like, uh, if you're planning out your, your weekly meals, then what you want to do is maybe just for like, I don't know, three, three days a week, plan it so that you're going to cook too much in the evening. Say on a if you know you're going to have a busy day on like a, a Monday, for instance, on the Sunday night, you'll cook too much, okay? Box it up, take it for lunch the next day. Next day, Dead simple. Maybe do that again on like Wednesday and Friday or whatever. Um, whatever works for you. But if you do that straight away, you've got three healthy, nutritious breakfasts all sorted out. We're going to be getting your meat and your veggies down here, which, which is, as we know, for winners. So get that tactic done. At least five portions of different veggies a day. Okay, it's going to help you keep satisfied and also ensure that you get a pile of these tiny little phytonutrients, okay, which are really important for like uh, antioxidants and giving you all the vitamins and minerals in, in, in these um, different types of veggies as well. Okay, and you'll find that that will help make a big difference as well. At least of three of these, try and get down with your evening meal. That's going to help to stop you. It's going to help fill you up and also help you stop help stop you from feeling like you need to nail a bucket load of carbs or, or you know the naughty stuff in the evenings um, which is a lot of people's downfall from from time to time try and get a couple of cruciferous ones down so things like broccoli cauliflower sprouts kale cabbage bok choy watercress those things are really good and they actually contain um indole 3 carbonyl which actually helps the belly uh, fight the belly fat causing xenoestrogens I've, I've, I've told about talked about those things before you know things that actually kind of mimic estrogen and actually help to to lead to to lower body fat storage and bingo wings and in, in men uh, moobs as well okay which isn't what we want so get that down uh, get your brekkie down every day I don't care if you get it down but like before you work out in the morning or, or after or if you need to have a, an early breakfast or a late breakfast just do make sure you get something down uh, it is it is pretty important you really do want to uh, replenish your body after the previous day's events and also if you're training in the morning then, then do make sure you get something down with regards to like your post training nutrition all right what i want you to do is within about half an hour of your workout get something a bit sugary down so maybe like a, a ripe banana and then a um s some sort of protein in there as well so it might be some i don't know so, some chicken or you know a couple of eggs or something like that what we don't want to have is too much fiber or fat post training because those things are actually going to slow down the rate at which the uh the, the the energy and, and the proteins actually get into the well, into the muscles to start doing their job okay so low fat low fiber straight after training 
but do get a bit of sugary stuff down. And I'm not talking about Haribo or a Mars bar. <laughs> All right, at least three mornings a week. Try and get a decent size serving green leafy veggies down with your brekkie. This is absolutely mega for, for helping you get in shape. Uh, in particular, if you're kind of estrogen dominant and you store a lot of fat in your in your legs and arse, this is really going to help 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 out with that, as well as uh, helping boost your energy levels. It's going to actually provide a lot of magnesium and calcium. Those things are needed for every contract muscle contraction that goes on in your body. So uh, it makes sure we get that stuff down. All right, protein with every breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we're talking chicken, fish, eggs, beans, pulses, nuts, seeds. That's actually going to help you feel satisfied, um, help replenish your, your body, and actually boost your metabolism as well. If you're doing all this great training, it's no good if you're, you're just because what happens in training if you're you're basically breaking your muscle fibers down. Now, doing that training is no good if you're not then going to build them back up. To build them back up, you need to make sure we get the nutrients in, in particular the protein, okay, which is all the amino acids in there, basically the, the building blocks that are going to make you nice, big and strong. Remember, the more muscle mass you've got, the higher metabolism, higher metabolism, the more fat you're going to burn just by doing jack throughout the day. All right, uh, sugary fruits like watermelon, banana, mango, pineapple, only get those down straight after training or, or just before because at, at that time your body's actually able to utilize the sugars. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're kind of just having them willy-nilly throughout the day, your body's actually, you know, it's actually going to elevate your blood sugar levels quite a bit, which means your body's going to send out a pile of insulin. Uh, generally, it's going to send out too much insulin because it does its job too efficiently. Um, too much insulin equals love handles in, in the long one there. Okay, so daytime snacks are always good to get the raw veggies down as well. As I said, sort of in and, in and around training times, get some sugary fruits is fine. Steer clear of the grains and the oats. Uh, don't generally need to get any of that stuff down. Oats actually particularly bloat people out quite a lot of the time. Only one I'd really say maybe get some down is some, some quinoa every now and again. Uh, in fact, I've talked about that there as well. So yeah, next one, number 10, limit starchy carbs. Just a sweet potato, potato, parsnip, quinoa, um, but steer clear of those things in, in kind of like later on in the evening. Um, for breakfast, for instance, you might have like a quinoa pudding where there's a video on my YouTube somewhere uh, where we just have quinoa, just boil it up in some almond milk, toss a few strawberries and blueberries in there, and then a handful of sunflower seeds. That's a great breakfast, which will keep you filled right up. Ah, what else we got? Cool. Yeah, so shoot for a minimum of three meals a day. You know, the, the whole thing about eating six meals a day to boost your metabolism is a load of bollocks. Um, you know, I, I've fallen foe to that before, um, just the same as you know, everyone else has. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's eating six meals a day will elevate your metabolism a very, very tiny amount. So, you know, like insignificantly so. So don't worry about that. It's a, it's a part of balls, as I said. If you get at least three meals a day down, then that, that's going to be fine. You know, some people can't eat five, six times a day. Um, you know, I, I don't mind it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, some people can only meet sort of, eat sort of two or three times a day. But do try and get three meals a day down. Brekkie, lunch and dinner. Uh, and, and you'll find that you're kicking ass, you'll feel fuller for longer, you'll have uh, much better energy levels, and you'll generally be able to kick more ass, which is the name of the game. You can eat like low GI, uh, GI's glycemic index, uh, so basically low sugar fruits, so things like cherry and grapefruit, apples and pears, but don't go completely nuts on them, okay? Um, you know, if sugars are full of fruit, well, yeah, yeah, sorry, fruit's got uh, fructose in there, um, it's obviously a sugar which is going to promote an insulin response. These these lower sugar sugar ones are actually going to do, going to be, be a little bit better because they have much less of an impact on your blood sugar levels. But again, don't go nuts on them. Um, that's always good. One thing I quite like to do with like my with my, my fruit, sorry, just to make sure I don't eat too much. For instance, if I buy a punnet of grapes, I know that it, it ain't going to be there if I start eating it on the drive home because uh, it'll just get completely nailed. So what I quite like to do with things like grapes and blueberries and sometimes strawberries is just to freeze them um, and, and then I kind of eat them frozen just, you know, because that way it's, they're such a pain in the ass to eat but they're still tasty that you, you, you're not actually going to um, eat half as many as you would do normally. Make sure you're eating at least, uh, drinking at least a litre of water per 50 pounds of body weight per day every day if you're dehydrated you're not going to drop fat that is simple 100 percent all right um so do make sure you're getting plenty of water down um if you're not hungry between your meals you don't have to eat as i said the six six small meals a day is part of balls um so don't worry about that three is fine uh, don't eat high fat with high f uh, high carb. Um, basically, a recipe for fat storage. So, for instance, what example I've got here: if you're having like a jack of potato, get it down with some lean meat and some salad, as opposed to like a fried oily fish. Uh, you know, fats are good, carbs are good, but they're not so great together. Um, if you if you um, I'll lose my head. 
Yeah, so if you want to have like a fatty food, so something like a fried steak or you know some some like oily fish or something, try and go low carb with it. So you might have like uh, might have your steak or your fish there with uh, just with veggies as opposed to having like you know, sweet potato chips or something like that. Basically, what happens if you have high fat and high carb, the the, the carbohydrate is is going to um, kind of uh, Increase those blood sugar levels and um, sort of open up your. It, it eventually it will kind of open up your fat cells. If you've got all the fat floating around in your bloodstream as well, that's going to end up in there, making you making you a bit more uh, yeah, a bit, bit, bit fat obviously. So yeah, don't go high fat and high carb. Plan your meals out. This is the biggest one. It's the big, 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 big one. Plan your meals out. It's key to success. Write down at the start of the week what you're going to eat, or even at the start of the day. Um, but yeah, try and get it done so you know what you're going to have. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Just write it down so you know exactly what you're going to have to do. Um, and then you can, you know, you're not going to kind of uh, get caught short. And as I said earlier on about the leftovers, you can plan out when you're actually going to have your leftovers in there as well. You know, for instance, people struggle with lunch, or they tell me they struggle with lunch all the time, but I don't, I can't, well, I can't understand why. Uh, it's just because they're not prepared. So what I, what, what you can do, um, so I quite find is quite good with myself and my clients. As I said, have maybe like two or three days where you have leftovers. You might have another day or two where you have soup. A couple of days on the salad. Excuse me. Um, and, and you'll find that you're going to kick ass. You know, suddenly you've got all your seven meals sorted out and it's been minimal effort. You know, you could make up a massive soup at the start of a week. You can make up a good big salad on like a Wednesday night and, and have that for dinner on Wednesday and then lunch on the Thursday. You know, it's, it's not hard. It's just, just a case of getting a bit of planning done. All right, the following supplements will be a winner as well. Magnesium, four or 500 milligrams a day. All the links for this, by the way, are on the Facebook group. So, so get over there and, and find those out. Uh, the zinc as well. With those things, you want to get those down about an hour to an hour and a half before bed. You'll find that will actually help you sleep like a baby. <clears throat> Milk thistle to help your liver out, uh, about 400 milligrams uh, evenly two to four times throughout the day is going to be a big one to help your liver actually kind of process everything and, and kind of carry on the whole detox side of things, basically function a whole lot better. Uh, the fish oils for winners as well, um, about three to five grams in two or three equal doses throughout the day to so get that down. Uh, ignore what it says on the back of the, back of the, uh, the, the tub generally. Uh, and Tulsi tea, that's the winner for um, helping to control your cortisol levels. Four to six cups a day. I'd get that down after about sort of 2 p.m. when you actually kind of want to, um, when you kind of want to wind down a little bit. <clears throat> Cool. So look, what I want you guys to do is, is you know, if you if you if you feel that you need a bit of an extra kick, is just read through these things again and just get stuck straight into all of them. Okay. If you can't do all of them, do ten of them. All right. You'll find it'll make a massive, massive difference to your results uh, and your body shape. And I shall look forward very much to seeing you soon. Any any questions you might have, just pop them in the comment section. And as I said, I'm buzzing to catch up with you guys soon. If you want to hit me with a food diary, then by all means. Bash one over. Catch you in a bit, team. Bye-bye.